it's Michael Tiny Saw with the market recap for the first week of, Janu of January 2013 and a look ahead for the week of January 7th, 2013. Let's take a look at economic reports and you see we really don't have much going on. As a matter of fact, we don't get anything that's red until Thursday. Uh, maybe a couple of things that may uh, give us a little bit of a shuffle, but the way these are color coded on Forex Factory is the the red ones have the most impact, the oranges um, have less of an impact here. So uh, we have the ECB press conference at 8:30 in the morning and unemployment claims, and then we have trade balance on Friday. So it looks like a pretty light economic report week. We do have a couple of FOMC members speaking, but uh, it doesn't really look like much in the way of economic reports. So let's take a look at what happened this past week. It was uh, the first three days of the new year, and of course, Monday was the last day of 2012, which was a big monster expansion candle. Uh, we gapped up Wednesday, and we kind of upticked Tuesday, and then, I'm sorry, uh, Thursday, and then um, Friday we closed higher into the uh, cash close, but then the, the futures actually sold off after hours. But, um, and you can see here, it's, it's only a little four cent change here by the time trade station shut down or stopped looking at uh, the overnight trading here. So we're above this green line. This green line is the 78.6% retracement of this swing down, and that is now suggestive that we will retest these highs up here. So that is the first target. Now above these highs, and these highs come in at 148.11, we're going to look for, let's see, we'll center the last price, we'll grab this, we'll go to 121, 121.72, well, I don't think it's 0.7, I don't know, I think it's 121.72. We'll try it, um, and then we can hit OK, and we can see that you got 151.04 above here, so another three points above the highs. All right, so 148.11, in my opinion, has a very good chance of being tested. If that is broken, and they break it with volume and good leadership, then we're looking at 151.04. This is basis the S&P. Uh, 500, which I'm using the SPY to, to view that. The diamonds, or the Dow, a little bit of a lag, but it should follow along with the S&P. Uh, I don't really consider it a huge divergence if the Dow doesn't complete, you know, go step by step with the S&P. It, it broke over at 78.6. It's also suggesting that it's going to go higher. The Q's, Okay, so the Q's are lagging a little bit here. Uh, if we go scrunch up this chart just a little bit more here to show this, this is the last Fibonacci retracement. You can see that the uh, Q's only made it back to the 61.8% retracement. So this really isn't forecasting, and plus it closed below it. This really isn't forecasting a try for the highs here on the Q's. All right, so this this is lagging. Nasdaq is lagging. Uh, the IWM, uh, it's been leading. I've been talking about this. If you've watched my videos, um, it it's uh, the January effect where small caps tend to outperform the large cap stocks into the end of the year and the beginning of the new year. That's already hit above the 2012 highs. Okay, we'll go to a weekly chart and we'll see that it's also at all-time highs. All right, here we go the monthly chart even more to scrunch it down even more. So the small caps are, are out in front here and leading and that is usually a good sign. Okay, the small caps represent speculative stock, speculative money being put into the market. So it's good that the small caps are leading here. Uh, this is a good sign. We can throw up probably need to throw up a couple of Fibonacci, but we'll just throw up uh, this one here. And then we can format this, 121.72 again. Uh, I 
I think it's 121. I, I don't know why I'm, I'm having a mind blank on that to be. <laughs> All right, so uh, that says 89.33. Yeah, these levels are a little. I'm just going to, I'm not even going to edit this out, folks. I know some of you may be like, geez, can you do this before you start talking? But maybe for those who need to see it on Trade Station. I don't know if I nailed this high or not. Did I nail it? No, it was a little off. I was one cent off, but that's all right. It's just the area you're looking at. So uh, 89.33 if this could continue, and nothing saying it will. I mean, the S&P is, in my opinion, forecasting to test those highs, but that doesn't mean that something like the Russell, which is at new highs here, uh, could see some supply come in, and they it starts selling here and, and pulls back. But as of right now, we look like we're going to try higher, and like I said, for the SPY to at least test last year's highs. All right, so let's take a look at some um, indexes. I want to start with the transports today, and the transports had a wicked week. All right, Monday was great, Tuesday closed, obviously, but look at the bar on Wednesday. Just a real nice, strong breakout over this basic basically year-long consolidation uh, the, it's suggestive here based on the retracement values that we do test these highs from 2011 if we throw up the weekly chart here okay uh, that would a break of that would be all-time high so the transports are screaming here and that is a good sign okay that when the transports are in sync with the market, even leading out with the market like they are now, that is a good sign. All right? It has to do with uh, the whole thing about economics. If transports are rallying, uh, that means that more goods are being shipped and you know transported, etc. So, but that's I'm a technical guy. Uh, most important is to me is the charts, but I, I do look at other things, obviously. Now the utilities, okay, they're also on a nice move. They're below the 200-day moving average, so a lot of um, Dow theorists, a lot of academic Dow theorists will say, well, the utilities are still diverging, right? The Dow looks like it wants to try for the highs. The transports are rocking and rolling, ready to try for the highs, and the utilities are lagging. To me, a more modern Dow theory is, is always looking at uh, the S&P versus the Russell versus the NASDAQ. I don't even use the Dow uh, 30 in Dow theory. But uh, I, I get a lot of emails asking me to show the transports and the uh, utilities. So uh, utilities are, are trying to bottom out here. But obviously, uh, they will need to get over the 200-day moving average as well. Here's a, a transport stock, FedEx. Okay. You can see here it's it's been in a, a pretty sloppy wide range over the past year so let's see if this thing could get going here as well JB Hunt okay JBHT really nice chart here broke out of a cup and handle a high level cup and handle okay usually cup and handles are bottoming patterns this is a high level cup and handle here so this is breaking out too uh, if we do a little quick measurement suggestive that it can go to the uh, low 70s as a first target all right uh, let's look at the semiconductors yeah, semiconductors got up above their 200 day moving average now we got to see if it can get up above 400 and keep going Intel okay I mean doing okay it was it, it's a dog of the Dow it was one of the worst performing stocks last year uh, January effect stock as well uh, it's doing all right. It's not not ripping or anything. Uh, Microsoft had a good day on Wednesday, but look, already given back basically down to the lows. I don't know why I'm throwing up Microsoft talking about semiconductors. I think I'm doing it because I'm I'm looking at the old uh, the the worst performing Dow stocks from last year. Uh, here's Hewlett Packard trying to hold their uh, little mini breakout here. Don't know if they'll make it or not. Back to the semiconductors. Sorry about that little divergence there. Uh, the Klet tanker got above the 200-day, came back, tested it, and held it. See if it can get above 50. Uh, AMD we looked at last week. Yeah, still trying to, to get a little bottom here. Could be a little a little cup and handle like pattern here. Uh, we do have a gap to respect at three dollars and thirteen cents. 
so uh, we'll watch that how about like a Nvidia over the 200 day good start see if it can keep going how about Broadcom okay Broadcom was a little uh, fake out before it popped up here uh, 35 held if it can get above that watch it for a move up to uh, 37 let's look at the XLF okay the financials strong we talked about this we wanted to see the financials lead and uh, they are doing excellent now they're up against it here this is pretty good resistance here these are the highest levels since uh, the 2010 peak the 2011 peak and then you got to go back to 2008 to see them this high so uh, we want to see if, if this can break out here and if it can you got 20 uh, up there how about the banks yeah, just a nice push up here in the banks okay broker uh, so Bank of America at uh, over twelve dollars twelve fifty and then thirteen ten is resistance JP Morgan trying to go up to these highs here at uh, 4650 watch them is Citigroup nice push up here okay you can see really got to get through uh, this level here at the, the 52s and it's been basing here for years here so you got another 10 points in here with uh, with Citigroup but still I mean this is a, a pretty nice short-term uptrend Look at uh, NTRS, Northern Trust. Nice push up out of a little pattern here. How about Zion? Okay, trying to get above uh, 23. How about State Street? Yeah, look, looking at 50. I mean, the banks are really acting well here. Broker dealer, nice push. See what it does at 100. 100 is not just a whole round number, it's also. A spot where uh, we had a, a nice a, a nice flush out started from Goldman yeah, just really acting well we highlighted this uh, a couple of weeks ago really acting nice nice day on Friday sorry about that uh, nice day on Friday here Let's see if uh, we can continue up here maybe even get to 150 if, if the market keeps uh, going when I see expansion bars like this though like I know there are some people who look at expansion bars because they see something like this where it just boom 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 in you know, three days in a row but most of the time after these expansion bars there's usually a rest right um, it looks like Goldman likes to have them back to back though here's one here's back to back here's back to back here's back to back right but you know when we get extended like this especially up to these uh, multi-year or even one year new highs uh, into resistance which you know this is where a big waterfall started from so you got you got to watch this um, you know I like to look for pauses here I like to look for a pause nice little pattern like this and then see if it can resume up Morgan like Mason you know, these stocks are all I don't like Mason is more just choppy but uh, Morgan and Goldman acted nice how about the cyclicals yeah just steaming here guys steaming Okay, you got a whatever pattern you want to call this. You want to call it a head and shoulders. It's, it, it was a topping pattern, uh, whatever it was. So you want to watch those highs up there. Uh, how about the healthcare stocks? HMO, uh, just choppy. Aetna is the one to watch in that one. The bellwether, I guess you would call it. Uh, watch the 50-day maybe as support if it keeps going. Otherwise, see what it can do from here. How about United Health Group? Really looking so hot, rejected the 200 day and rolled over. Uh, gold, yeah, can't make up its melon here. Got over the 200 day for a couple of sessions, then came back down. Silver, yeah, not really doing much here either. It's more sloppy than anything. Oil watch the 200 day I, I read oil wrong I thought this thing was gonna break down it never broke down so unless you was super aggressive and gambling I mean it was nothing to, to do here but I really expected it to break down and go to these lows now we got the 200 day watch that as potential resistance glamour stock time Apple really not acting well got up to the area of the 50-day moving average which is this blue moving average and 
just roll back. Uh, if this nice bar from New Year's Eve can hold 50% of it, preferably the top 50%, then watch for a, um, a rotation back up. Google, and, and really nice move on Google. We saw it first back here, pop, pull back. Now we'll see if it can get to these highs up uh, there. We have, uh, let me see what we got. Yep. We have resistance coming up at 745 and 8 cents it looks like okay Baidu trying to bottom out here price line 200 day moving average but more sloppy than anything Chipotle coming up for me uh, October lows here more choppy than anything. We got uh, could be wedging here. Okay. Uh, research emotion. What's it gonna do here? The big question. It's uh, trying to coil up. I see a lot of people calling this as their stock of the year. I don't see it in the technicals, but uh, they're talking about the new phone or something is supposed to revitalize their brand. I, I don't know. I don't see it. I'm just, I saw a couple people talk about it that Rim could really see a nice recovery. Look at Las Vegas Sands. Nice push above 50. How about win? Yeah, nice push, but I don't like this rejection up here. How about pot? 200 day moving average if it can get above that you got the potential mid 40s to watch stock like Walmart look at Walmart here it broke below the 200 day but it looks like it doesn't want to stay down there for long see if it can lift up to at least the 50 day moving average JC Penny hmm an interesting one Oil here, right on top of the moving averages. See if this can uh, push up here. You got resi you got resistance at 23s, and then you got the 200 day at 25s. So, recap time: we are above the 78.6 percent retracement in the Dow and S&P. That suggests we are going to go to at least the 2012 highs. The NASDAQ is lagging. The Russell is leading. So that's good. I like Would I like to see the NASDAQ leading? Of course. I'd like to see the NASDAQ and the Russell as the top two. Yes. But I'll take the Russell leading. I'd like to see the NASDAQ doing better. But the uh, S&P is strong because of the financials, mostly. Because of a lot of sectors. But uh, the financials are performing um, swimmingly, I guess is the right word to use, and as long as that continues, it's going to be very hard for the broad market to uh, pull in, even with technology lagging. Now, I am not sitting here pounding my fist on the table, being an all-out bull. I just believe that we are, are, based on the Fibonacci retracement levels that I watch, that we should retest the 2012 highs at a minimum. From there, we'll see. If we can break through, we have the next levels highlighted, etc. So, um, for the coming week, I'm going to be watching for weakness as buying opportunities. I'd love to see a couple of dull days and form a nice coil and then get a breakout maybe into the mid to end of the week. Obviously, since I am a short-term timer and trader, um, if something comes in, some bad news comes in, and it uh, spooks the market, and we sell off with a with a thud, with a nice impulse, you know, I'll update my plan. You can always check in by um, signing up to our email list, and also the newsletter will be launched at the beginning of this week. I'm trying for Monday, may have to hold it off to Tuesday, but I'm thinking we're going to get it done Monday, so. Uh, make sure you drop me a line and let me know that you want to be on that beta testing list and we'll be sure to get it out to you. Have a fantastic week. 
contact me with any questions and I'll talk to you in the video or in the daily email.